Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be with you here in London. Um, nice to meet you. Maybe for people who don't know anything about No Hard Feelings, you could just give us a little intro. What can people expect when they watch it? Well, it's, uh, it's they can expect a lot of laughs. Uh, it's a comedy about um, two parents who put out an ad uh, looking for a uh, young woman to uh, kind of date their son before he goes off to college. And uh, Jennifer Lawrence answers that ad. And it really struck me when I watched it. I felt like I hadn't watched an out and out comedy like this or an R rated comedy, um, you might say, sort of, you know, of, of the likes of this since I was growing up. It sort of feels this kind of a retro feel to it. Right. Um, but maybe something that we all need right now. But maybe you could talk about the genesis of the project specifically for you. And I love the fact that I didn't even know that, you know, it's based on kind of a real ad, yeah. you know, slightly altered for the film, but a real ad that you guys came across. Yeah, it was about, uh, it was uh, four years ago, I was sent the ad by uh, the producers, Mark Provisero and Naomi Odenkirk. And I thought, who are the people that put this ad out? You know, these helicopter parents, There's they get tutors for everything, including, including this. Then I thought, you know, who answers this ad? What's going on in her life? And I thought, hmm. Jennifer Lawrence, she would be great. So it was, uh, you know, I was thinking about her kind of from the beginning and I thought this is an interesting situation because it's bringing together a lot of different ideas with helicopter parents and, and you know, Gen Z and kids on their phones and, and all of it kind of in one story. So I thought mm, there's a lot of opportunity here. And of course, Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, I think we've always known she had this, you know, glint in her eye whenever you see her in other roles, yeah. such good comic timing. And then, you know, sort of her, you know, whenever she's on chat shows and all this kind of thing, it, it comes out even more. But we'd never seen her in a, you know, full blown comedy. I know. Um, and it seems like you've just managed to unleash her in, in, into this film. What was it like working with her? I mean, she really is a force of nature. She can do anything. I was just, you know, the last movie I did was, you know, about three kids who swear. So this was like a big st step up for me. And uh, she is just, I mean, she's so funny in this movie. And I, that her performance, I, I think it's one of my favorite, I'm biased, but it's one of my favorite performances of hers. She is just truly just walks through this movie just like a force of nature. And of course, finding her co-star was going to be no easy task. Um, you know, how did you go about that casting process and how did you know you found the right person? You know, strangely enough, we, we saw him on the second day and I thought, wow, this is, this could be it. And we still saw 700 more people to make sure. But it was clear early on that he had that special something that he had the comedy chops that he also, but could also had the, um, the emotional ability to not get blown off the screen with her. He could hold his own against an Academy Award winning actress. It was really cool to see them together. And it became obvious, you know, we did our chemistry tests, like they were just perfect together. And even just in the supporting cast, though, there's just so many, you know, little moments and, and the chemistry between all the cast and people like Matthew Broderick, you know, in this epic wig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so how did you bring all these people together? It, it, it's so funny about the wig because I was like, I wonder if people will know it's a wig. Everyone knows it's a wig. I was <laughs> surprised that everyone knew it was a wig. Um, but, uh, and then, I, like, I think after the movie, it was the first time I saw him without the wig. And uh, I was, he looked strange to me in his normal hair. Um, yeah, the cast, you know, there's a lot of people from Broadway. Um, and there's, uh, you know, Natalie Morales is in it, who I've worked with before, who's very talented. Scott MacArthur, um, Laura Bonanti, uh, who's a Broadway actress. And yeah, it was just uh, a lot of people from New York where we filmed. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, this is the, the most fun I've ever had making a movie. And the cast was, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. And there's some obviously some absolutely hilarious moments, but I'm really unexpected bits and, and scenes. Then on the other hand, some really sort of poignant and unexpectedly emotional scenes in the scene where he uh, sings to her, you know, in the restaurant on the piano. I don't know who's, you know, obviously singing, you know, cause he's a uh, talented musician as well. Um, what were maybe some of the harder scenes to pull off? Um, and, and on the other side for you, the ones that were really important, maybe like that one. Yeah, I mean, that, that was really important because that was kind of a turning point in the movie. Um, in, in, different scenes were different in different ways. So I was laughing a lot. So sometimes I would ruin scenes by laughing, but other times, uh, you know, some of the, the stunt work was, you know, it was very technical, of a technical nature that was difficult too, but mostly it was just me, you know, blowing uh, takes by laughing. Um, and, you know, just making sure that, uh, just getting it right, you know, just making sure that what was on the page ended up on the screen, so. Was, and was there any moments that ended up being a bit improvised? I'm like looking at the cuddly toy that's up there remembering that part. Yeah, there's probably some improvisation <laughs> in that. Um, 
you know, there there was, but it all kind of melds together as, as to one. Basically, I'm going to take credit for all the improvs. All the <laughs> great improvs the actors did, they were my ideas. And like you mentioned at the beginning, you know, there are some like themes that come through that I think maybe people of a certain generation, mine in particular being a millennial, you do sort of pick up this sort of cross-generational, uh, those things that sort of clash. Like when she goes to the house party and it's like, your parents are here and you aren't all drinking. And all right. Being on your phones all the time and the jokes that she tries to crack. Um, and there's something really, you know, maybe in this day and age, we, we take everything so seriously. Maybe some of those things that can feel very tense, especially when lots of debates are happening online. Is there something quite cathartic about just poking fun at this stuff and having a bit of a laugh about it? Well, I hope so. I hope people can go and laugh at themselves and laugh at these characters. Um, you know, the movie, you know, there's no uh, political agenda. You're just trying to make the funniest movie you can make. So, and hopefully people uh, will laugh. I don't think there's anything particularly controversial in the movie. Um, I think it's just a good time. And. You know, did you have some comedies in mind that you grew up watching that perhaps influenced well, somewhere yeah. when you were making it? You know, I don't, the big one is The Graduate, you know, older woman, younger man. Um, but also like uh, The Heartbreak Kid, the original one, the Elaine May movie, um, I really loved. And, you know, really older comedies uh, were the ones, uh, even before my time, the ones I really watched a lot of, Risky Business, um, things like that. And I was thinking as well that, you know, a lot of those comedies that I've sort of had in mind, you would usually perhaps have a male lead and then maybe some of the more crude scenes would be coming in the physical comedy would be coming from them. And it felt like a bit of a turning it on its head to right. see, you know, when like Jennifer Florence, that scene when she's on the beach, you know, yeah. like really going for it. Was there something kind of, you know, refreshing about that? Well, it's, you know, it's funny just to take a beautiful woman and just really put her through the ringer. She gets <laughs> maced, she's punched in the throat, she gets thrown off the car. She, I mean, she really gets punished a lot in, in this movie. Um, and yeah, that probably, I, you're right, it, probably 30, 40 years ago would have been a male lead in that role. But um, I think it's it's much more interesting to subvert that. And what do you hope people take away from it? You know, laugh out loud and have the emotional scenes, but also, you know, the fact that she thinks, I guess, that she's fixing him or helping him, but in the process, she's really having to find herself. And it seems that she goes on her own arc as well. Yeah, she has her own journey. And yeah, she thinks she's helping him, but I think he's also helping her and she's helping herself. And I, th I think that all kind of comes through at the end. And in terms of your projects, the other thing, I know you're involved with Jury Duty as well. Yes. You've been in with James Marsden. How has that been? And what else have you got on the horizon? Um, Jury duty has been a delight. Uh, did not expect this response, so that's been really fun. And, and James is amazing, and people get to finally, I think, see him be as funny as he can be. And I don't know what the future holds. Well, I'm kind of, you know, open and thinking, and, and we'll see. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me, and just can't wait for everyone else to see you know hard feelings. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you. Love you too.